I have a question for young single Christian men. Are you living big? Hello, this is Kathy Reichel with tips for living well together to build strong families and strong people. This week's topic is living big as a young Christian single man. Young single Christian man, you're probably excited about your future and all the opportunities and adventures that lie ahead for you. There is so much for you to experience and ways for you to contribute or make a difference, as your generation likes to say. But because I love you and have been called to build strong, happy families, I feel I need to share with you Eric's story. I met Eric a while back at a conference. He's in his middle 20s, tall, good-looking, athletic build. He was working the early shift on a security job. He was tired. He had worked late the night before. As we talked, I learned that he had two small children, a four-year-old boy and a toddler girl. As I began to congratulate him on the joy of having young children, he had to stop me and tell me his story. Eric has only seen his son once. He faithfully pays $300 a month in child support, but as far as being able to enjoy his son and be a part of his life, Eric wistfully told me, my son has a daddy. His mother married another man and they live in another state. And the story goes on. Eric gets to see his little daughter regularly. Her child support is even more. He shared, because I guess girls need more things. This child's mother also now has a husband and Eric and the stepfather have clashed on occasion. So, over a third of his income goes to child support for children he does not get to raise. By the time the bills get paid, there's not a lot of money, time, or energy to put toward living his dream. He doesn't have a dream anymore. Just get the bills paid. I encouraged him that God still has answers for him, and there will be something exciting for him to do with his life. I asked him if he went to church. He said his mother was a pastor and he knows the Lord. He has had access to biblical teaching, but we can see it's not what you know that matters. It's what you believe and act on that makes a difference in your success in life. My point? 1 Corinthians 4.14 begins, I am not writing this to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. The church epistles Inspired writings from Paul, Apostle of Jesus Christ, clearly instruct us to avoid fornication, which is sexual relations outside of marriage. 1 Corinthians 6 says, flee from fornication. 1 Corinthians 7.2 says, avoid it. 1 Corinthians 10.8 says, don't commit it. Colossians 3.5 lists it with uncleanness, and inordinate affection. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 says that the will of God is that we abstain from it. The fact that the culture of this world supports and even encourages fornication doesn't change God's instruction. In fact, it has resulted in heartbreaking pain and confusion for many, many children and families. In light of Eric's sad story, I don't believe people are bad for fornicating, just foolish. Wonderful young Christian man, you have a very important decision to make. Will you believe and act on God's instructions for your life and control your sexual desires, or will you conform to this world, and if it feels good, do it? Eric will still have opportunities for success if he allows God to work in his life but it will be more difficult and there are some things that just can't be fixed. I encourage you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5. And from Proverbs 5, 15 through 19, drink water from your own sister and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. May you ever be captivated by her love. 
I'd love to hear what you think. Leave me a comment if you want to share your thoughts on this subject. And please, like, share, and click subscribe on YouTube for more tools to help your family thrive. This is Kathy Reichel. Thanks for tuning in.